And welcome back. I hope you've all been doing well. Since we've completed the Steam Library playthrough on Pop! OS, I promised to move on to Lutris. And so here we are. This will be a multi-episode series, but not nearly as long as the Steam Library playthrough. I'm thinking, or really guessing, about three videos, maybe four, uh, maybe a couple more than that, uh, but we'll see. So in this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about what Lutris is, what you can use it for, how to install it, how to install various runners, aka emulators, and so on. We'll also talk a bit about how to install game launchers like Ubisoft and the Epic Game Store. I do want to point out that I do not have a GOG account, so if you're here specifically for that, I apologize as I won't be covering it in this episode. I suppose I could create an account and add, uh, add GOG in a later episode, so I'll probably do that. In subsequent episodes, we'll cover game installation, configuring your emulators, configuring Lutris, testing out a few games, and we'll cover a few other topics as well. Okay, so as per many of my guides, we'll be using a virtual machine since I have Lutris already up and running on my host machine. I always prefer using a virtual machine as I can demonstrate the installation process from start to finish. Now, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So what is Lutris? I think a good way to answer this question is first by stating what Lutris isn't. Lutris is not a game store and it is not an emulator. What Lutris is, is simply an open source game manager that serves as a one-stop solution for accessing and managing all of your games in one place. Whether that be Steam, various emulators, and all those trillions of storefronts and game launchers out there, including GOG. Lutris is also community supported and has been around since about February of 2009. And I believe we're currently on version 0.5.18. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into the installation, the installation of our runners and proprietary launchers. And we'll talk about linking your Steam account. And then we'll go ahead and wrap up the video and talk about what we're going to discuss in the next episode. All right, now that we're in our virtual machine, we're in our Pop! OS lab, we're going to go ahead and install Lutris. There are two ways of doing this. The easiest way is to simply go to your Pop! Shop Type in Lutris and click on the install option. Go ahead and close this out. And the other way to do it, obviously, is the terminal. So to install it via the terminal, type in sudo apt install Lutris hyphen Y and hit enter. Put in your password and enter again and let it do its thing. Now this will take some time, so I'm going to go ahead and speed this up for time's sake. All right, now that we've finished our install, let's go ahead and exit out of our terminal. Man, let's go ahead and start up Lutris. Come down to your applications, uh, show applications. Click on the Lutris icon. And here we are. So now we're now in Lutris. You can see we have GOG, the Epic Game Store, EA, Ubisoft Connect, for our uh, launchers, our various proprietary launchers, I should say. And then your runners will be down here. And your runners, to install a runner, you simply come over here to the top, right hand corner you'll see three lines click on that and come down to where it says preferences come over to the left hand side you'll see runners click on that and over here in the middle you'll see all of your uh, all the different runners you have at your disposal atari 800 and i forgot to meet my phone atari uh, the atari 800 emulator for atari 400 800 and xl emulator um, citra is still available apparently kind of surprising dolphin just a variety of different emulators here that you can pick from and install. To install them, you just click on the button over here, the down arrow, and it'll install it for you. And then in a later video, we'll talk about how to configure each one of these different emulators. Not all of them, just the ones that I um, that I use that I think are likely the more common emulators out there. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this down and turn off this virtual machine, and then we'll go into my install of Lutris on my host machine. We'll be right back. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up Lutris on my machine. We'll open up here, and you can see that I already have a ton of games linked. My Steam library is actually linked. Um, if you want to add a game, you can either do it by going to the top left-hand corner, clicking on the plus sign, and you can add a game uh, through the web... Uh, you can search the Lutris website for installers. You can install a game from an executable. You can install uh, from a local install script. You can import a ROM, or you can add locally installed games. I'm going to close this out and to get you can also get to this option by coming over to the three lines and then going to add games and those three lines are on the upper right hand side uh, same menu options on the pop-up going to close that out so in the center you have a search option you can search for whatever game you want 
there as long as it's in your library, of course. And uh, the toggle view, you can either do a list view or you can do tiled. I prefer tiled. The little arrow for dropping down. Uh, these are some of the ways you can sort uh, by name, year, last played, installed at, and playtime. I'm going to close that out. And then the three lines in the upper right hand corner. Uh, these are more options for you uh, installed games only. So if you click on this, it only shows you the games that you have installed on your machine. So uncheck that. If you want to show your side panel, the left hand side, you have that checked. If you don't, uncheck it. Uh, to add games, we've already talked about that. The preferences, we touched on this uh, when we talked about uh, installing a runner on the uh, during the installation process on the virtual machine, but we'll go ahead and do it again. Click on preferences, go over to runners, and these are where you can find your emulators. So we have Citra. Apparently Citra is still available. Um, you can go ahead and download it by clicking on the thumbs up. Dolphin. Uh, just a variety of different emulators on here. Uh, Melon DS, uh, MGBA. In fact, I need to go ahead and install Melon. So you click the thumbs up, it goes to the installation process, and then when it's finished, it'll now show up on the left-hand side. On the left-hand panel, you can see Melon DS is right there. So you can scroll through here, and there's tons and tons of emulators uh, to play around with. So we'll go ahead and close this out. Actually, you know what? Uh, let's go to Interface. So there's a few options here to manage your interface, how you like, sources, GOG, Humble Bundle, uh, the EA app. So if whatever you uh, activate on this side will show up over here under your sources. So I've got Steam turned on, Steam for Windows. Uh, let's see, Ubisoft Connect, EA. Let's go ahead and just uh, turn on the Humble Bundle. And as you can see over here on the left-hand side, there it is. And then if you have an account, you simply click on Connect. Is restricting API calls from the software like Lutris and GameHub. Authentication to the service will likely fail. There's a workaround. Okay, so we have to do a workaround to get that to work. So uh, I consent. Now you put in your your email and your password and hit login. And this is the same process you would do for Ubisoft Connect, EA, Epic, and so on and so forth, and even GOG. It's going to want you to log in once you log in. Um, you'll see from Epic Game Store, the games that you've purchased on those particular platforms will show up here um, in the center of the screen. So for Ubisoft Connect, uh, back when I was actually a uh, customer of Ubisoft's before I got fed up with them and kind of washed my hands of them, these are some of the games that I bought with that particular account. All right, so going back to our options, uh, we have Discord, obviously for the Lutris Discord, the Lutris Forums. You can make a donation to help support the project. And you want to learn more about Lutris than some of the basics I covered at the very beginning. Uh, click on that and it'll give you some a uh, little more information. Yep, we are on uh, five or 0 0.5.18 video game preservation platform uh, created in 2009 by Matteo Commandon. Okay, so go ahead and close this out. Okay, so that wraps up this episode. Uh, next episode, we'll talk about linking your Steam account, how to do that. And we'll talk about how to play games uh, from Lutris. And we'll talk about some of the more popular emulators out there and how to configure them to work with a gamepad, whether you have a PS4 controller or a PS5 controller, Xbox controller, and so on. And we'll talk a little bit more about each one of these different emulators that I use. Citra, Dolphin, uh, Melon DS, MGBA, uh, PCSX2, PPSSPP, RPCS3, SNE or SNES 9X and so on. I'll probably add a few more emulators on this side um, between now and the next episode. So we'll talk more about that when that time comes. All right. So with all that said, um, I want to go ahead and wrap up the video. So I thank you all for watching and thank you all for being patient in my absence with the holidays and whatnot. Uh, but we're back at it. So uh, next episode should be coming out, I would say, middle towards the end of next week. We'll have episode two. And... I hope to see you on the next video. So until then, have a good one and stay safe out there.